Rub up your engines! All right, the AC on this 09 Impala, original owner. It works, it doesn't work. It kind of does as it pleases. So we're going to figure out what's going on. They also want me to check out the car generally. So, let's start with the AC. Okay, he's the original owner. The only thing he's done to the AC system is he's replaced the blower motor once. Everything else is original. So, you never know what goes on electronically. We're going to scan it first. So, we'll turn the key on so the idiot light's on. Get our scan tool communicator. Plug it in under the dash. So it's right here. We can see it's communicating now. We'll fire it up and see what happens. No auto scanning it. Got single zone AC. Auto diagnosis. Here we go. It's checking everything. Right now, you can see it's got problems and different things. The computer, he's not really worried about that as it stands now. We'll look at that later, but it's got a track code. See what it is. It says that the recirculate position command circuit is open. Well, that's just recircle fresh air here. That's not going to make it not blow cold. Time being, we'll clear it and see if it comes back after we road test it. It's also got a body control module. Got three codes there. Let's read those codes. Right front wheel spencer, right front wheel speed erratic, lost communication. This is the anti-lock brake system. They said that the light comes on every once in a while. Stops okay. They don't want to spend a bunch of money on the ABS. It's a fail-safe system. When it doesn't work, it goes back to non-ABS. On an old vehicle like this, with close to 200,000 miles on it, you're not going to spend a bunch of money on it. Look at the computer. It's got codes too. Three codes. We'll diagnose those. Three trouble codes. Boss communication, transmission control module, anti-lock vibration module, and body control module. Yeah, we'll erase those trouble codes too, see if any of them come back after we road test it. Now, the transmission control module is the only other code that's left. It's got three codes too. And they were the same codes as the ECM saying that it had loss of communication. Ah, weak, bad, or anything to do with that. So now, we've erased them all. And we can understand that there really isn't an electronic problem with the AC system. Other than it might not go to recirculate or fresh air correctly. That's not going to shut the system down. Now we're going to look at the mechanical part. You always have to check the electronic first. You could be peeing in the wind, checking the mechanicals, the electronics that feed it are weird, then you know, you're not going to fix anything or you might end up replacing a part like the compressor that doesn't need replacing. We now know the electronic parts of the HVAC are pretty good. So now we're going to check the mechanical ones. Now here, realize one thing. He's the original owner. He's never added refrigerant. Let's pray it's only low on refrigerant and not a worn out compressor. We'll get our blue low pressure line, hook it up to the low pressure line on the car. It's generally the thick fat one coming off the AC. In this case, it's right here. Now, don't worry about putting it on the wrong one. They only fit one way. See, this snapped on. The valve's open. Now we turn it in. When you turn it down in, that lets the valve allow the pressure from the line to go to the gauge. And you can see, there we go. What we're going to do is start it up and see what the pressure is with the AC on at idle. It's starting to blow cold, so I know it's working. We'll look at the pressure. In this case, it's not too bad, it's around 40, but we're going to rev it up. Now on this vehicle, with the temperature it is out today, it's pushing 90 now. It should be 40 to 45 PSI on the low side. And it's getting to about 30. So it's low on refrigerant. Now I know you might want to ask me one thing about my procedure. And that's why did that hook up the high side? Well, I'll tell you why. Because it's a GM product and they're poorly made. When they get this old, if you hook that high side pressure line on to measure the high pressure, those valves often break. Then you got to replace the whole expensive line. So unless I have to really do in-depth analysis, I will never hook the high side up on one of these older GMs because the systems are so cheaply made that then it leaks and you got to buy a really expensive part that wasn't broken in the first place. The fact of connecting this and screwing it on, it messes with the valve and then you got to replace the whole line. So why get involved if you don't have to? That's why I didn't hook up the high pressure side. You ask anybody who works on GMs, they'll tell you the same thing. Lost a little refrigerator over all these years. It's never been touched. 14 years old. So. What we're going to do, we'll look here, and it says V6, 0 0.635 kilograms. So that'll be 635 on my scale. I'm going to hook up my recycling machine, 
take everything out the cynic and of course I recycle it in a recycling can then I will put fresh new refrigerant 0.635 kilograms in I'm hooking my recycling machine up to suck the old stuff out plug it in we open this up it recycles it in here the machine will suck everything out put in the recycling can now some guys will use the recycling over I personally don't trust them because there might be impurities in it who knows over the years what people have added to the system so I just take those to a recycling center when they're full and I put in virgin refrigerant that's the best way to do it we shut the gauge off they connect the line to our tank we'll turn the scale on till it goes to zero sometimes it takes a while there we go zero now we want that to say 635 so we'll open this up and start letting it in you can see it's starting to go in then we'll start the car up turn the AC on full blast outside air and we wait until this says 635 it's getting there understand one thing I'm adding this as a gas if the tank is up it's letting gas in but if it's upside down it's not letting liquid in liquid is dangerous it takes longer to put it in with the gas but it's safe you put liquid in you can ruin a compressor the liquid can get in there and destroy stuff so you want to put the gas in not the liquid even though it takes longer and here we go 635 well I was off a tiny bit that one little bit isn't gonna hurt anything close enough to 635 now I do have to say I've been trying out this Vivar refrigerant recovery unit so far it's worked perfectly fine it costs a whole bunch less than more expensive commercial American versions do yeah it's made in China but I mean it's just basically a vacuum pump that sucks it out and pumps it into a recycling jug it's not that high technology so they really shouldn't cost so much money as some of the expense I see some of these things be fifteen hundred two thousand dollars no reasonable price one and so far it's worked perfectly fine I'll see as the years go on so now we'll take for a spin and see how cold it gets put all that a quarter away too so far so good ah it's blowing freezing cold and yeah it does have 179,000 miles on it but for an old car hey yeah it's a little bouncy <laughs> the struts are definitely worn they're still the original one but hey it still tracks pretty straight got a reasonable amount of acceleration I reset everything we'll see if check engine light or anything comes back on but that AC is really cooling me down I gotta say it's working good so far I'm gonna drive it about 45 minutes just to make sure now in one sense it is a pretty typical Impala with this kind of mods the transmission often has a little jiggle when it shifts especially second to third gear you feel a little boob it's warm but I mean hey it goes good enough you're not going to put a remanufactured tranny on this old thing it doesn't really slip much you step on the gas it goes there you felt the lump as it went back into gear it's worn but if you baby it still could last quite some time and so there you have it 45 minutes later still freezing cold air conditioning now we're going to pray the compressor lasts old car with a lot of miles on it but it's working perfectly cold now now you know what to do first check the electronics because if there's an electronic problem don't waste your time with mechanical problems you have to fix that first in this case there weren't any we went and found out it was just low on refrigerant and fixed it sometimes it's that simple and here's some bonus questions and answers Ben M says I have a mystery knock on my 2004 Expedition V8 engine got 2004 Expedition Eddie Bauer 124,000 miles it's been making this knocking sound for years and thousands of miles it doesn't seem to get any louder I can hear it with the stethoscope in the front of the engine and it goes away at about 1500 the engine has good oil pressure it seems to run okay but what is it? I can just about guarantee you what it is it's probably the timing chain tensioner is not tensioning correctly they work by oil pressure pushing them out when it gets dirty and carboned up it doesn't push the tensioner now so a lot of times when it gets hot and warms up then the tensioner breaks loose and it makes tight and it doesn't make it rattle anymore that's one of the few things that you can hear noises of over years and thousands of miles and doesn't self-destruct let's say you had a bad bearing on the crank bearing and the pistons knocking now the pistons gonna go flying off knock a hole in the engine in a reasonable period of time and you've been doing it for years and thousands of miles so that's probably what it is you want to have a mechanic check to see if the tensioner needs replacing but before you 
you do that? My friend Bernie's got that ATS. He has an oil flush that you put in, rev it up to like 2,000 RPMs for half an hour, and then you change the oil filter. That can often clean the carbon off of the slide on the tensioner, and it stops. Try that. If that fixes it, send me a birthday present. My birthday is in October 2nd. <laughs> So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.